Hello, I'm Bob Pickett, CEO slash janitor of Pickett's Fine Art Frame Shop, 110 North Austin Street, downtown Seguin, since 1983. And welcome to uh, the Seguin Art League's uh, 2020 summertime uh, tutorials. And uh, I hope that you gain something from, uh, from our little discussion today. Well, there are several topics I want to touch upon over the, over the course of the summer, or however long this takes. But initially, the first thing I would like to bring out as a custom picture framer is I have a question for you as an artist. I find it really interesting that artists who value their art at a million dollars are happy with putting a $5 frame on it. And I do understand where that comes from. After you have spent so much time uh, doing your art piece, all the time, dedication, materials, and, and, and everything involved in it, I know the last thing anybody ever wants to do is, oh, now i got to put a frame on it. And because you, you, you're wanting to sell it or display it or something. So I know that is the last thing any artist wants to think about. But you have to remember something. You're not selling just your artwork. You're selling the whole piece. You're actually promoting a piece of furniture, a frame, whether it be a little $1.50 frame that you got at Goodwill or at Walmart, or you spend thousands of dollars, doesn't matter. You just bought a piece of furniture that is going to be on your wall, on your shelf, in your home for many, many years. And I know I get the argument a lot of times, but hey, it costs so much. And then somebody will say, I'll say, I'll quote a price, and they'll and I'll say, this is um, this this comes to a hundred dollars. A hundred dollars. It's only a two dollar poster. Well, now it's a hundred and two dollar poster because I used forty five thousand dollars worth of equipment to frame your two dollar poster. I know it's being facetious and it sounds silly, but I really need for you to think as an artist about the whole presentation of your piece. It is very important. And now, that's not to say that many of you have done some fine work. I've, I've seen a number of the displays over the years. I'm very impressed with some of the presentations, many of the presentations, but there are some that I'm thinking, oh, if they had just not done a hand-cut mat. Oh, if they had just cleaned their glass. Oh, if they hadn't gotten a frame with a broken corner or something. This would look so much better. So I would like to encourage you as an artist that think of also the end result, that this is going to be in someone's home. Now, the other problem that I have, and, and I apologize if I sound like I'm chastising you, but it's along with that attitude of, God, it costs so much to frame things, you know, it doesn't matter what. Well, let me ask you this. When was the last time you had a real nice meal like at, oh, oh I don't know, Myron's, you know, for example, or, or anywhere that you sat down, you had a nice meal, if we can still do that today. I'm not sure. Nancy, can we still do that? Um, and you spend 50, 100, whatever amount, amount of dollars for that meal. Let me ask you this. 24 hours from now, where is that meal? Mm -hmm. So, if you invest and amortize over 10 years, a $100 frame, $10 a year, you have a nice investment on the wall. So I really encourage you to kind of rethink uh, your, your attitude towards the, the framing. Now, I'm not saying that everything should be custom framed. That's not necessarily true. Um, you may just want it for a quick sell or just for a display. Well, I can understand putting it in just a very simple ready-made frame. But that's very, the chances are that that's going to stay in that for a long, long time, even if you're doing it for yourself. So I, I hope that through the course of our little discussion today and in the future that I can get you thinking about the end result. Let me also tell you that my industry, now while I've been downtown 37 years, uh, custom framing is really a new industry. Uh, Prior to about the 1950s or so, if you wanted something framed, you went to the local paint shop or you went to see um, a, the, uh, a local cabinet maker. Because if you think back, or if, you're, if you, you may or may not be aware, but early, early artists 
when they finished their piece, it wasn't like they just went to a store to the closest Ben Franklin's and bought a frame. No, they went to the furniture maker, a woodworker, and together they created the frame from scratch, from raw wood, stained, gold-leafed, hand-carved. And oftentimes in museums, some of these old Renaissance frames, they're worth more than what the piece that's in it is worth. So this is, this is sort of a novel thing, a new thing is custom framing, and there are a lot of facets to it. What you see in here is about 3,500 corner samples. I offer over 2,000 colors and choices of mats. There are six, yeah, something like six different types of glass, believe it or not, and acrylics. So there's a, there's a lot to, to the framing world that I want you to think about and think about how you've spent all that time making your masterpiece and get that attitude out, oh, no, I gotta put a frame on it. You need to, no matter what you put it in, it needs to be properly done, properly cleaned, properly sealed, and it needs to be a very nice presentation because it will be, hopefully, on someone's wall for many, many years. So keep that, Keep those thoughts in, in mind. The next time you, you, we have another Art League presentation or you're preparing something for a client, you know, what is the end going to look like? And I'm hoping over uh, these next several um, recordings that we do, we're going to talk about things that you can do at home to improve your presentation and the framing, how to make it look professional, how to clean it up, what to do, what not to do, uh, does the word masking tape ring a bell? Oh, I love masking tape because I get to redo a lot of framing when people use masking tape. Things like that. What kind of tools do you need? Uh, there are very simple tools that, that you can buy in a hardware store or even order on Amazon that you can just keep. It's a small investment just to help clean up and, and make a very nice presentation with your piece if you wish to frame it yourself. Now, so let's discuss a little bit about the variety of frames that you can find. And you know, you can find them, you can find some great frames at estate sales with, you know, with nice art in it. Go to an estate sale, go to a garage sale. You're not really looking for what's in the frame, but the frame itself. Um, I've had a number of customers over the years bring, bring in items that they have um, purchased at a second second-hand place, antique store, garage sale, where, wherever, and they have a picture or something they want to go into it, and they want me to make it fit. Well, oftentimes, it's a different ratio. It doesn't, it doesn't fit exactly, so it may mean that I have to trim the item if possible, or I add a mat border to it to make it fit into the frame. You can do this as well, and I'll be glad to help you with that. With all the choices of mats that I have, uh, if you have a, a smaller piece, you found a real nice frame, just come in and say, hey, Bob, we need to get a mat for this uh, to make it fit into this frame that I really like. Not a problem at all. Now, what to look for? You want to really scrutinize. Many times these frames are dirty, but take a moment, look at them, look at the corners and check around, you know, look for broke. If it's got big gaps in the corner, mm, you might want to pass that by unless it's something that you think can be fixed or if you go ahead and purchase it for a few dollars bring it to me and let's take a look and, and I can tell you this is repairable mm, this is best in the dumpster so you know that's one thing in the glass you really want to take the glass and, and get light and you want to look for scratches people are always they hate to throw away glass or they're moving or something so they'll bring me old frames and can you use this I generally cannot because it's interesting how over the years glass gets scratched if it has acrylic in it i'm definitely throwing that away because chances are it's been cleaned with paper towels and windex over the years and it's just really foggy looking and scratched and these things you don't want to pass on to a customer not not if you're wanting to sell your piece uh, you know for a substantial amount amount of of uh, money oh a sidebar you are selling your art Please listen to me. You are selling your art. You are presenting the art in a frame. You are making your money on your art and not the frame. You didn't 
make the frame and people have that in their mind thinking oh my gosh it's going to cost me fifty dollars to frame this now i got to sell it for a hundred dollars extra you know fifty dollars more and now i gotta give no 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 if you value your art at $100 and you paid $50 for a frame, you now have a $150 project. Please, don't try to make really a profit on the frame. Recover your money. Use that for the next frame. That, that's a freebie right there. That, that will help with your pricing as well. What else to look for in the frames? Or on the back side, take a look at the back. Has it had old nasty cardboard in there? Do not use cardboard in your frames. Cardboard is 100% acid. When I started in the middle, mid 80s, that was the popular thing to do, to, to use it as a filler, to put it against the artwork, photo, whatever it is. We would just cut up a cardboard box, staple it in, and call it a day. Well, we know now that cardboard is highly acidic and it causes, it can burn ridges into it. It can literally eat the paper up. So no cardboard, get rid of that if that's in the frame. And then pull out all the rusty nails and tabs and, and, um, and maybe invest in something like this. This is called a flex gun. And you can order these online. There's a chance Hobby Lobby even carries these. But the simple thing is, let me show you how this works. When you shoot this into the frame, this is called a flex point because it can bend up and down. Isn't that nice? And they make them with stiff points too. But very often when you try to take a frame apart that you want to reuse, if it doesn't have these kind of points in it, you cannot bend those others up and make them, make them work. Now, if they've got the little staples in there, you might be able to get that to bend. But generally, we'll pull these out. And listen, I do this for so many people. If you get to a point where you don't have a means of closing up what you're working on, just run in here. We'll shoot some points in it and send you on your way. Uh, in another session, I will show you how to use that, how to properly wire, how to properly close, and, you know, just using tools, like I said. Types of frames to look for and to avoid. If the frame is broken in the corner, in the joint, that may or may not can be fixed. And you can repair that yourself, too, with a little wood glue, and you get you what's a, a strap. I should have brought that over here. But it's just a large fabric strap with four corners. You can get, you can order it online. You can get it at Home Depot. It's used by cabinet makers, furniture makers. And that'll, you put that around here, put some glue in there and tighten that down and it works pretty good. You also want to make sure that uh, there's not any bad chipping on here. Now, with the vast majority of you being artists and you have access to paints, touch up is a thing for you. It's amazing what you can do with acrylic. I recommend acrylic versus oil just for the expediency and, and the time of, of being able to touch it up. But you can touch up frames. Now, there are some frames you may have a problem with. You see these two frames? Th you know what the difference is? Primarily, this is solid petroleum. This is a poly frame. This is solid pine. This is a wood frame. I tell people when I'm pricing things out, I tell them usually the polymer frames cost less than the wooden counterparts. Just don't damage them. Poly frames are very difficult to repair compared to wood. They don't accept paint very well, so you wanna watch for that too. When you're going to, uh, looking for secondhand frames, check the type of frame it, and it may you may have to turn it over it's very difficult from the surface to see what it is but if you can see the back side and you can tell you know look for grain and and that'll help you decide what to do with the frame because i'm telling you if you have a plastic frame and they're becoming more and more and more abundant throughout the planet now if it's scratched broken don't buy it it's going to be a problem. A wooden frame, there's some, you can do some putty in, some painting, and you can fix these up. Another frame to watch for are metal frames. Now underneath here is a, um, it works by a screwdriver, flat blade screwdriver. Metal frames are, are, are easy to work with. They're kind of old school, don't sell metals as much as I used to. Uh, and years ago, it's considered a poster frame. Extruded aluminum has become very expensive, but they're so easy to work with, to take apart, to put together. And we'll talk about that another time too, how to properly take these apart without breaking your glass. So you wanna look for glass, you wanna look for the types of frames. You, then you wanna really inspect inside if you think, I can reuse that mat board, 
Well, I discourage you if it's very old. Let me show you this. Let me just grab a stack of mats here. You see the difference in the cores? See how this is this side is very creamy? See that? And this is more of a pure white, many of them. Some of them I say many of them because some of them are called solid core mats. This is old school mats. This is what if in high school you used, in college you used, you know, years back. And now these are being phased out, the old core mats. And we're and I only sell acid-free mat boards. So these will live so much longer. If you look at, at old pictures framed with the old core type of mats, you will find the acid burns on them. You will see a little burned edge on the artwork. So avoid reusing mats like this. Try to avoid mats that have this cr old cream core on it and because that's not doing a, uh, you're doing a disservice to your artwork if you're doing that. Of course, if it's an oil painting, you know, that's a whole other thing. That's just in, in a frame. So you want to take a look at the mats. Is can you reuse the mats? And another thing, this is kind of weird, but if it's an old, old frame, you also want to take a look. And if it has a paper dust cover, chances are it's already tearing off. Kind of look for signs of bugs. You do not want to resell a frame, put your artwork into something that you find evidence of bugs. Believe it or not, termites eat these things. I had frames, a couple of frames years ago where somebody brought it in and when I took the dust cover off, the inside was gone. Bugs had eaten it. So that's something else you want to look for is if you can peek inside, uh, what, inside what it, uh, of it. Also, please don't continue using the wire that's already on the frame. All that needs to be replaced. Again, just come and see me. Say, Bob, can we put a new wire on this? I'll get rid of it. It's got an old rusty screw eye. We get rid of it. I put a little, what's called a little mirror strap D-ring on there. We'll put a fresh wire, plastic coated wire, wire it up properly, and off you go. I don't even charge for that. Uh, it's just to help you help you out. So that's what to look for when you're going to go, you know, shopping for frames. Look for sizes you can use. Oh, by the way, another sidebar. Glass can be reused. Glass can always be cut down. In one of our other sessions, I'll talk about how you can cut glass very simply without, you know, bleeding to death. So find some good frames, look for corners, get rid of the cardboard, make sure there's no serious scratches on that glass. Believe it or not, it does get scratched and you have something good that you can reuse. All right, thank you, thank you for, um, for tuning in today. Uh, I hope you learned something. If, if, uh, if you have questions, feel free to contact me. You can text me at 830-660-9485 uh, or send me an email at rwpickett, two t's, at att.net. And I'll get to your questions as soon as I can. And nothing is too silly or too dumb. And, and I hope you're tuning in to all the other awesome tutorials that have been going on this summer. Thank you very much.